Um, so my presentation is about LIP2P in NIM. I work on NIM LIP2P. My name is Tanguy. You might have seen me on uh, GitHub. If you're wondering, this is how you pronounce Tanguy. Hope that helps you. Um, I'm a software engineer at Status, and Status is mostly known for its peer-to-peer uh, -peer decentralized chat application. Uh, but when we started to build uh, this, this, this application in 2017, we quickly realized that we were lacking a lot of infrastructure to be able to build it. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer is hard, as we all know. <laughs> and so we started a whole branch of Status, which is focused on what we call the infrastructure project. And so we have a few projects like this, like Waku, which is our um, messaging layer on which uh, Status is built. We have Codex, which is a storage layer. We have Nimbus, which uh, some of you probably know, which is a consensus and execution clients for uh, Ethereum. And so if we do look a bit deeper, what we can see is that all of these projects are based on lip 2 p uh, And actually, to be more precise, NIM lip 2 p uh, So we love NIM and status. We have, a, sorry, you cannot read, but we have about uh, 50 full-time NIM devs and 70 public repo. And when I say this, you probably have two questions. Uh, the first one is, what is NIM? NIM is a programming language. Uh, and the second question is, why NIM? So I'll try to reply to this question in this talk. Um, so NIM is one of these better C attempts. Uh, C is still the best, sorry. But uh, that I'll compare here with uh, Rust and Go. So actually, they were all started around the same time. So uh, Go, uh, Rust was started in 2006, uh, Go in 2009 and Rust in 2008, uh, sorry, and NIM in 2008. But they have diff very different features and goals and everything. So I would say, this is my opinion, that Rust killer feature is uh, safety with no runtime uh, garbage collection. That's my opinion. Uh, Go its concurrency, right? You can do crazy stuff with Go routines and everything. And NIM, it's a bit harder because its goal is just to be nice to use overall. Like it, it's not like one strong point or something. It's like try to have a balanced language that you can use for anything, basically. Uh, the last difference between these three languages is this. Uh, this is the main backer for each language. Uh, and this is their 2019 revenue. Uh, I couldn't find the status revenue on Wikipedia. Uh, sorry. But so yeah, uh, because we have uh, the, each language has very different budgets. Uh, well. They, they progress at a different speed. And so NIM only hit uh, version 1 in 2019, which is a bit late compared to the others. And what does it mean is that the NIM community is a lot smaller compared to other languages. So this is the number of uh, repositories on GitHub for each language. Uh, you cannot see here. Yeah, it's NIM. Here, yeah, just yeah, here. Yeah. Um, so Go has over a million public repositories, NIM only 8,000. And it does have some impacts on our day-to-day -day life, uh, life of, uh, as a software engineer. So for instance, uh, if you want to start uh, implementing WebRTC in uh, lip 2 p uh, this is how you do it in Go. Uh, this is for Rust, probably. And this is NIM. So you can see it's uh, a bit different. Um, thankfully, uh, NIM has a very, very powerful CFFI. Uh, so sorry if you cannot read, but this, this is like wrapping printf in NIM. It's only one line of code. Uh, so we don't have to build everything from scratch, but it's still a lot of work to build the, the stacks we need. And the second impact is that because less people use NIM, you're more, more likely to hit compiler bugs just because you're more likely to, to use a specific feature set which is not uh, very well supported yet. So I'm going to ask you to focus on the next slide very hard. Forget the bad things about NIM. NIM is perfect. Thank you. Um, so yeah, why NIM? So if we go to Wikipedia, the, defin the goal of NIM is to be efficient, expressive, and elegant. Uh, I've written it in French because it's elegant. Um, so efficient means performance. We want a very good performance when you build something with NIM. Uh, expressive means it's easy to read, easy to write, easy to understand. And elegant, uh, it's a bit more vague, but uh, it, it tries to have a feature set which makes sense in, in its whole and uh, is nice to use overall. So I, I'll do you a, a NIM crash course so you can understand the, the following slides. So this is a very simple example. I'm creating some variables. You can see that uh, we use a Python-ish uh, syntax. 
uh, each, uh, each variable will have a type, which is static, so it's statically typed. Uh, I cannot assign a string to an int, obviously. Uh, we also have immutable variable. Um, this is how you create procedures or functions. So you, we have multiple ways to return a value in NIM. Uh, we either are going to use uh, the last expression of the function as a, as, a, as a return value, or we can return explicitly, or we have a result variable which is created uh, automatically by the compiler. And if you assign something, it will be returned uh, at the end of the function. And so putting everything together, we have this uh, simple example. You can also see that we have multiple ways to call a function in NIM. Uh, so you can either call it like regularly, or you can do first parameter dot function name dot other, uh, and then the, the other parameters, or you can uh, remove the parentheses. And so obviously echo in this case is also a, a regular name procedure. It's not like Python where, where they have to make a new version to remove parentheses or add a parentheses, whatever. So yeah. And this is just an invalid template, but I, I won't go into, into it uh, now. So how does it looks in practice to use uh, NIMLIP 2 p Well, you need internet, first of all. <laughs> so this is a very simple NIMLIP 2 p It's like the hello world of LIP2P. It's pinging someone, getting the ping, and yeah. So I'll go into a bit more details. So we start by importing lip 2 p the ping protocol, and Kronos. Kronos is our asynchronous framework uh, at status. Uh, then we create a procedure which is going to take a string, return the future of duration. This uh, procedure is async, obviously. Uh, I create a switch, I create a protocol, I start my switch, I dial the peer with the, the ping protocol, then assign the ping to the result variable, and close everything down. So again, I think this is pretty simple to read, right? <laughs> I mean, it's not, uh, there is no weird magic going on. Actually, there is, but whatever. Um, and so this is how you use it. You can just call wait for, uh, give some random APFS nodes as a parameter, and then you can create a description as, is that connection fast or slow? My definition of fast is less than one second. I'm very, I'm very nice. Uh, and so yeah, that's again very simple. But actually, if we look a bit deeper at this example, it's already using all the NIM metaprogramming features. So one of the killer features of NIM is uh, all of its meta metaprogramming features, which are very powerful. So first of all, we have generics. Obviously, if you look at the return type, you can see it's a future of a duration. Uh, if we look at the defin definition of a future, it can take any type and uh, will work. And then we can create a uh, generic procedure, which is going to depend on the type you give it to. Uh, then we also have templates in NIM. Uh, I think templates are pretty common. Even in C, you have uh, define. Um, so if you look at this line, the if p seconds bigger than one, uh, actually in NIM, bigger than is a template. It's like a synthetic sugar for x bigger than y becomes y smaller than x. And we have a few templates like this in the standard library, which makes it a lot easier to build new types because you don't have to define every operation on your type. Uh, this is another example of a, of a template which is maybe a bit more useful. I have a factorial procedure which is very expensive. Uh, don't run factorial, it's a joke. But yeah. uh, uh, I have a template called once which is, uh, which, to which I can give a piece of code. And this code will only be ex executed once in my program. And so I use it in this very useful procedure to only compute the factorial once and at runtime. And so this once template is a better example of something which is useful. Um, it's actually part of the standard library in NIM. Uh, but actually, for this very, very specific example, we have an, an even better way to do it in NIM. Uh, you just use const. So a constant variable will actually be compiled at, uh, sorry, computed at compile time. So this procedure, factorial, will be run inside the NIM compiler VM. And it's going to yeah, do it at compile time. So the factorial function will never be executed, in this case, uh, at runtime. So it's perfect for, for performances. <laughs> Um, finally, macros. So macros, uh, it's a bit uh, less common. I think uh, there is some in Rust, but uh, yeah. If we look again at this code, you can see that the get ping procedure is async. And uh, this little pragma saying async is actually a macro in NIM2. So we can look at the source code. It looks like regular NIM source code. But this macro will be executed at compact time. It can take any code as a parameter. So in this case, it will take our uh, full procedure and transform it however it wants. So it can remove lines, add lines, like it, it can do anything it wants. 
Uh, macro are a bit complex, and uh, obviously this one is very short because the complexity is hidden away in the async single proc, which I'll show here. So yeah, it, it's a bit complex. Uh, but they are very powerful. Uh, we have to use them with uh, great care because you can easily make uh, very weird stuff with them. But for instance, the async macro, we use it for every async procedure, so thousands of times in our code, code base. And so it's uh, very useful to have them outside of the compiler and inside the library uh, instead. I'll show another example of macro. Uh, so this one is part of the standard library. It's called FMT. And you can see that it's going to extract, uh, it's going to take a string as a parameter and extract every code from the uh, curly braces and put it out of the string. So again, a, a nice uh, syntax thing that you can create with a, as a library. Uh, another example is Carax, which is an IM HTML library. And so they have this build HTML, uh, build HTML macro to which you can give a tree. So like uh, looking like HTML, right? You have divs, you have uh, headers, uh, paragraphs, etc. And it's going to transform this, whatever you give it to him, into actual NIM code, which looks like uh, nodes and everything. So this is, again, uh, what we call design system languages, something like that, I think. <laughs> uh, and so it's very useful, for instance, when you're building HTML inside NIM, uh, you can just write it out as HTML instead of uh, using templates or whatever. So yeah, this was the simple ping example in EP2P, uh, which I think highlights a lot of nice things about NIM, but I, I know you don't care about any of what I just showed. You just want to know if it's fast, right? I've seen this, yeah, like the bus. You, you want to be like the bus. Uh, I'll wait for the bus. Did you see the speed of this bus? It's, uh... So you want to be like the bus. So is NIM fast? Yes. Uh, so this is unreadable for all of you, I'm sorry, but it's a comparison done by Megalabs of uh, NIMB, uh, sorry, uh, Ethereum consensus clients. And so we have one in NIM, in Go, in Rust, in Java, in JavaScript, and I think I, I got them all. And so on the left, you'll find the memory usage. Uh, we are the green line, so we are at the very bottom, which is where you want to be. Uh, and on the right, you have the CPU usage, where we are not at the very bottom, but almost. Uh, I, I, Apparently, the JavaScript one is even better in terms of CPU. What do you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, very good performances, obviously. And yeah, that's all I have to say about performance. All right, I mean, I wanted to say one other thing. Um, the Nimbus team worked a lot to get these results. It's not just you use Nim, and by default, you will get uh, crazy results. But it shows that you can get close to C performances using Nim, because actually, Nim compiles to C. So yeah, you can do anything you can do with C. You can do it in NIM too. So this was my selling session for NIM. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, now I'm going to sell uh, NIM Lib2P instead. <laughs> uh, so NIM Lib2P, we started it uh, about two years ago. Now we have uh, three people working on it uh, full time. Um, I mean, it's a Lib2 implementation like any other using the same specs. Uh, one difference with other implementation is that ours was started for N Ethereum specifically. I think most of the implementation were built for IPFS. Uh, and so we were, since the very beginning, very focused on safety, because obviously in Ethereum, uh, if you have a, a, a security issue, you can lose uh, thousands or, or tens of thousands of dollars. So we are very careful with safety from the very beginning. So yeah, V1, uh, obviously it means that we have, uh, in, we already had a stable core because of uh, the safety things I talked about, but now hopefully the API will stay stable as long as uh, possible. Uh, so yeah, very happy to, to do this. Uh, we have a website where you can find some examples on how to use it, like get you started. Uh, it starts with a simple ping, like I showed earlier. And actually, the last project as a tutorial is a full video game, which looks a bit like this. Uh, I'm playing against myself here, so it's not very uh, intense, but yeah. So it's a full Tron video game using lip 2 p It's going to use discovery to discover peers, uh, gossip sub to find the, uh, to, to do matchmaking and then a direct connection with a custom protocol to, to, to do the actual game. And it's only 150 lines of code, so it's very, very short, uh, which again shows how NIM is uh, short and nice to read and everything. Uh, so yeah, this is the last tutorial. I could go over every features we implement in uh, NIM lib 2 p but it's not very interesting, so I'll just show you what we are missing. Um, so we heard a lot about Quick and everything. Uh, Quick, uh, we actually have an implementation in NIM that we did. It's only missing encryption. 
which in my opinion is not very important, but uh, apparently we cannot ship without encryption, so it's not, uh, not finished yet. Uh, because we don't have Quick, uh, we didn't build the CAT DHT yet, uh, because doing uh, DHT over TCP is uh, against my religion, unfortunately. Um, WebRTC, as you saw in the beginning, we also have to build our full stack, which is indeed uh, built with many, many boring RFCs, uh, so it's going to take a, a bit of time. And finally, this UTR that you just heard about. Uh, we have the whole of the unpunching, the whole of unpunching stack except this bit, which is the most important one. So yeah, this is, I guess, the big feature which are currently missing in nimlep 2 p but we are working uh, to get them as soon as possible in. Uh, we actually have a roadmap, which is the number issue 777, easy to remember, uh, on the nimlep 2 p repo, uh, which is a bit longer and going into a bit more details, but you know, I'll just show the big uh, highlights, I guess. Uh, so we want to work on Gossip Sub. Uh, Gossip Sub, we use, it lot, we use it a lot as part of Ethereum, uh, uh, Status Chap, etc. So we want to make sure it's as optimized as possible. Uh, there is some work to, on Lighthouse, from Lighthouse to improve it. Uh, we join that effort and also try to, to do other things. Um, Tor Transport, to enable you to use Tor as a transport, which uh, yeah, it can help in some applications to give you better uh, privacy guarantee. Uh, C mindings, as I said, NIM compiles to C, so it's the best kind of binding you can have. Uh, but we have to work a bit into how to do async in C and everything, so it's going to take a bit of time. But we are hoping to get C mindings, which could then be reused by any language uh, which enables you to bind to C. Uh, run in the browser. So today you can use uh, JS lp 2 p or uh, Rust lp 2 p with Wasm. Uh, NIM can also be compiled to Wasm, but NIM can also compile to JavaScript natively, so it's something we need to look into. Uh, Bluetooth transport, it's something very far out that we would like to get. I think Bertie already did something like that uh, for the Goli P2P, but uh, yeah, we would like to work more on it and get it in the specs, hopefully, but this is like very far out. So thank you. On the left, you'll find the QR code to the NIMLI P2P repo, or you can just search for NIMLI P2P on GitHub. There should be only one of them. Um, I'm also on the Falcon uh, Slack, or you can find my email here if you want to ask me anything. Yeah. Or just now. <laughs>